Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. This is a case of microcornea with coloboma iris and coloboma choroid. The corneal diameter is only 7 mm. I have taken up this case for surgery. I have made the main wound on the sclera at around 11 o'clock. And now this is a side port at around 2 o'clock all the incisions are just posterior to the limbus posterior to the corneoscleral junction the pupil has dilated very well but see if I inject an abable the abable is coming out it indicates that there is some upthrust and it is likely to be due to low scleral rigidity. And now I want to stain the anterior capsule with tripan blue dye to get some contrast. In this case, we are getting a white reflex because of coloboma chorite. Yes, the anterior capsule has been stained with tripan blue dye. Now I am washing the dye out. And now a uh, viscoelastic substance, 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose, is being injected into the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber is filled up with this visco. You cannot see the iris. The people has dilated very well. And now Capsulorexis is to be done. I introduce a 26 gauge bent needle through the main wound. Make a small incision on the anterior capsule and raise a capsular tag. I do not know how the capsule will behave, but since there is low scleral rigidity, the capsule may tend to run to periphery. So I am making a small rexis about 5 mm. The corneal diameter is only 7 mm and I am going almost near the corneoscleral corneo junction to get an adequate sized rexis. Yes. There is no genular attachment seen on the visible portion which indicates that the capsular bag is of normal size. There is no genular dehiscence particularly in the colobomatous area that is a good thing and this will help me in surgery. If there is some genular dehiscence I may have to use some CTR which was not necessary in this case. Some more visco after hydrodissection and now since the cataract is soft I have to go bevel down and try to aspirate the lens matter. This is Oatly Cataract 3 FACO machine. The easy tube goes into the eye with its bevel down. Now I try to aspirate the lens matter with bevel down. As I catch hold of the central portion, I will tilt the mass and here it is. I'm going to tilt the mass and immediately I will turn the handpiece and make the bevel off. Yes, it is like this. And remove the lens matter. Again, bevel sideways towards the right side. And as I catch hold of some lens matter, I turn and make the bevel up. Yes, most of the lens matter has been removed. Some epinucleus 
or cortical lens matter is there superiorly I can remove this by a Simco cannula I inject some visco 2% SPMC and now as since the SPMC will come out slowly I will get some time to remove cortical lens matter but as soon as the anterior chamber will be shallow I will immediately come out inject some more visco and aspirate the cortex the cortex is coming out slowly at this time I am aspirating the cortex I am going through the side port and aspirating the cortex from 10 o'clock yes antechamber is remaining formed when I am going through the side port because the side port is snugly fit to the Simco some cortical matter is remaining from 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock and now to remove the cortex from superior aspect and for another reason I am going to make another incision at 7 o'clock and see as I inject visco the visco comes out through the side port at 2 o'clock enlarge the side port little bit and making another side port here through this clearer at 7 o'clock and now I'm going to introduce the Simco again through the 7 o'clock side port and remove the cortex from 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock yes the cortex has nicely come out now I go through the left side port and remove the cortex from 7 o'clock and 9 o'clock so cortex has been satisfactorily removed posterior capsule is clean and now we have to implant an intraocular lens some of my colleagues advised to keep the patient aphakic but I decided to put an intraocular lens the intraocular lens power is 18 adapter and now the lens is being injected in the capsula bag this is Hoya on 50 from Japan a hydrophobic acrylic single piece monofocal intraocular lens the leading haptic has gone into the capsular bag now I inject some visco and then I introduce a Sinsky hook through the 7 o'clock incision and place the superior haptic in the capsular bag the lens is nicely placed in the capsular bag and now I am going to remove the visco I am irrigating some bases in the anterior chamber and then I go behind the eye well and irrigate the capsular bag uh, this maneuver removes most of the visco from the capsular bag the visco comes out through the main wound as I irrigate some BSS again I irrigate some more fluid in the anterior chamber and then irrigate and aspirate for some time and now I'm injecting little air and then a bit of pilocarpin to constrict the people this is pilocarpin my plan is to do 
sphincterotomy at on o'clock just opposite the seven o'clock incision this is the reason I made the sideboard the another wound at seven o'clock yes the people is getting constricted so I inject little visco and now to introduce the Havana scissor through the seven o'clock wound I'm going to enlarge it a little bit so that I can introduce a vanas scissor and cut the pupillary margin at seven o'clock this is the keratome and I'm enlarging the wound to about two millimeters now here goes the vana scissor and I'm cutting the pupillary margin at one o'clock but this is a very small cut my plan is to cut it little more how is it possible let us see what can be done as the scleral rigidity is low I thought if I indent the sclera at one o'clock see what happens the iris will go little downward and I'll be able to cut a little more and the circular fibers of the iris is cut nicely and this will keep the people enlarged and this will help the patient to see better and this will help in many ways and now since this patient has low scleral rigidity I'm going to close all the wounds by 10 o nylon suture this is the wound at 7 o'clock the 10 o nylon suture has been placed and now I'm going to tie a knot in this case I have observed low scleral rigidity a normal sized capsular bag so a microcornea was not the problem because I went about 1.5 millimeter behind the cornea scleral junction I made the main wound at 1 o'clock about 1.5 millimeter behind the cornea scleral junction and this helped so this is the closure the wound about 2 millimeter in size at 7 o'clock and now I trim the thread near the knot and the knot is buried inside the sclera yes this is done and now the wound at two o'clock is being closed just a single pass suture and now I'm going to tie this knot the air bubble was injected 
to build of intraocular pressure otherwise we may make the suture too tight after injecting air bubble just oppose the wounds and this is a good opposition and there will be no leakage of fluid through this wound now the threads are trimmed near the knot and then with the help of a forceps the knot is buried into the sclera now the main wound is being closed by an x suture an x suture because this wound is larger or 2.8 mm and the patient has low scleral rigidity so to close this wound nicely um putting this x suture and now the knot is made this is a two on on suture two throws a two loops pull the thread and just oppose the wound and this is on throw and this is another throw and now the threads are trimmed near the knot now see how this knot buried into the tissue if you just pull it it may not go but simultaneously you hold both the switches and it has gone into the tissue so all the three switches are closed now this is to oppose the conjunctiva this is a releasable suture i like this releasable switches very much i prefer this way of opposing conjunctiva than to cauterize conjunctiva i don't like to burn cells to oppose the conjunctiva now let us see if we can form the anterior chamber in this way yes let us see the intraocular pressure there is no leakage of fluid from any wound intraocular pressure is okay but little on the lower side so i have asked for moxifloxacin i am hydrating the main wound with a little bit of moxifloxacin and simultaneously some fluid goes in and now the intraocular pressure is on the higher side so in this case the last step has been hydrating the main wound by moxifloxacin and now the conjunctiva is being opposed by the releasable suture see how it is put three throws 1 2 3 hold this suture and pull it and that's it and now cut the longer thread with the needle and cut it shorter than the other thread and cut the thread but keep cut the other thread but keep it longer the idea is you know which thread to pull
you pull the longer thread and this suture will come off these are the poster pictures see the cornea is clear anterior chamber is nicely formed and the sphincterotomy has kept the people nicely dilated the patient is very very happy thank you very much for your attention hope this video will encourage you to take up challenging cases hope you will not be afraid of taking cases with microcornea henceforth thank you once again for your attention